Welcome to the Parsing Guide for Tier 11 in Cataclysm. In this video, I'll be going over gearing and boss by boss tips on how to maximize your damage output in the first raid tier of Cataclysm. And while this video is more tailored towards Bloody Case, most of the strategies we'll go over will be applicable for any raid group out there. So stick around if you're interested in that. And if you haven't already, please make sure to watch the part 1 of this video, which goes over rotation, talents, consumables, and reforging in detail. Link for that is in the description. This guide is made with experience from my own testing and may or may not be the absolute best way to approach the game. Don't make gearing choices that will have a negative impact on your raid team and don't play mechanics in a way that will grief your raid unless you and your raid group are on the same page. And with that, let's get into it. Let's take a look at two best in slot sets and talk a little bit about certain pieces and what to prioritize along with some alternatives to tide us over. Here is a set that is realistic and more comfortable survivability wise. In a 25 man setting, this is the set that I would recommend for those looking to push high numbers without completely giving up on the idea of surviving. We prioritize getting the DPS 4 set as it's simply better than the tanking tier for all blood death knights, regardless of your goals. We shy away from mastery bar from a few high value items such as Sinestra Neck and Ring while prioritizing stats in accordance with the previous video. The one thing in our statting that is slightly different for tier 11 is that there are so many encounters where we do not benefit from hard expertise cap for portions of the encounter with the biggest examples being Magma, Meloriac, Alakir and of course Sinestra that cannot parry. As such, for this raid tier, we also prioritize crit over expertise despite it seeming slightly lower. Of course, we want to use Heart of Rage and Crushing Weight, but as we are rarely on the top of the priority list when it comes to items like that, running with items such as Heart of Solace, License to Slay, and Magnetic Mirror until it's your turn will tide you over just fine. And while the Cho'Gall Axe is certainly higher DPS than the Maze from Magma, it only really becomes significantly noticeable if you're playing Orc for that racial bonus. Now, as you can imagine, you can always be more degenerate, and this next set will be for those who seem to have missed the memo on the introduction of Mastery. This is the Stupid Biss set. This set does what it can to maximize the damage potential for your Blood Death Knight. It swaps stamina gems for strength gems and gets rid of as much Mastery as possible. We pick up the tier 11 chest and drop the tier legs in favor of a more offensively stated option. Off the Earthfall is ideal, but Terrestrial Leg Guards will do just fine. We get rid of that silly Mastery Dodge Neck and swap the Axe for Ashkandi. Now, Ashkandi is only about 60 DPS upgrade or so for Orcs due to the racial bonus, but extra damage is extra damage. This set clocks in at impressive 62% Mastery, so only use it if you and your raid team is on the same page. Let's give some rapid fire tips for each of the encounters and give rotational tips wherever applicable. Magma. Use 3 to 4 healers with a Holy Paladin kiting the adds with Righteous Fury and with the help of 1 or 2 hunters running entrapment. Use all of your cooldowns in the opener as they'll be back up for the head exposed phase where your group will also be using Lust to push the head and ideally kill the boss while it's still exposed. You may want to save your Empowered Room weapon for the head exposed phase where the boss takes 100% increased damage. But if you're cleaving the ants with Heart Strike and you have Lust up, you'll be GCD capped like crazy and it'll be better to simply use it at the beginning of the fight like normal. I have two rank 1 parses of Magma, one where I use Empowered Room weapon on pull and one where I use it on the head. But currently I'm leaning to it being better to use on the head, especially if you're not killing the ants. Taunt on add after Mangle to make sure you maintain vengeance during the exposed phase. Speaking of Mangle, the damage that you are doing to the exposed head while in Mangle will not count for your parses unless you are logging the fight yourself. So make sure to do that if you want a good parse. Omnitron. Sack the bosses to the best of your ability and utilize the slime pools while cleaving the boss and the green adds with Heart Strike. If your guild isn't able to stack the bosses while exploding the shields, coordinate with your off tank so you are always tanking the current target. Chimera. Make sure you solo tank the boss during the non-feud phase. As long as you have a blood shield of 10k, you will be immortal. During the feud phase when the off tank takes over, stack with a group behind the boss and use AMS with 1 second left before Caustic Slime goes out. This will allow you to avoid the 75% missed chance debuff and you will get vengeance from the absorbed damage. Taunting the boss on pull with your back turned against the boss is not a bad idea here, since he has a 5 second auto attack timer and getting a dodge or parry in the opener will grief your DPS. Atromedes. If you have a good group, use one tank and one healer while blowing all but one gong at the start of the fight. Delay the first gong by a few seconds to allow people to put up debuffs and for you to get vengeance. Use the last gong on the Searing Flame. 
nuke it down before the first air phase, but if you get an air phase, you can do some cheeky damage on the boss with Icy Touch and Death Coil. Maloriac. Blow your full load in the opener, spread the dots to the ants, and use Death and Decay on the Vile Swills. Ask for salvation from your paladins and put Blood Boil with Crimson Scourge higher on the priority list. Make sure your group interrupts all of the Abomination release casts and that you have designated kiters for the last phase. We have two Holy Paladins bouncing the small ads between each other with the help of Righteous Fury, Bubbles, and Ring of Frost from Mages. Our off tank takes the big ads when they spawn. Use Lust on Pull if your guild wants to pump or save it for the last phase if you want to play it safe. Nefarian, you want to start tanking your Nixie on the first phase, and since you won't start the fight with high runic power, use Outbreak as you run in. Use all of your offensive and defensive cooldowns in the first phase. They'll be back up for the last phase. Just play well, use your offensive and defensive toolkit, and time your second pot and ghoul with Lust in the second phase, and you will get a good parse. Conclave, you want to be at Nazir at all times. Ideally your guild will be pumpers, so you can get Rohash and Anshalt to 2% before the ultimate ability without using Lust. You'll want to leave 1-2 to two people on each platform to finish off the boss, while the rest of the group is blasting Nazir with Lust. You can reset your stacks as a blood decay, and I recommend using the AMS on the 6th stack of permafrost. Resetting with AMS after the ultimate ability may result in you roasting the raid as the boss will target the second highest threat target with the frontal ability if you are in AMS while he uses it. Alakir. This is one of those fights where you actually benefit from having a longer fight in order to stack the debuff in phase 2 higher and to get the benefit from a second ghoul. Try to maximize your uptime on the boss, use nitro boost for nasty tornadoes and generally just pump. In the last phase, you'll want to have a Stormling up as you transition the boss. Just taunt it and have it attack you during the last phase. This will make sure you have high vengeance and can pump in phase 3, but the faster you get phase 3 down, the better. But don't worry too much about the stacks in phase 2. We dropped our stacks at 4 right before we were gonna lust, but still ended up getting the rank 1. Halfus. No one cares about Halfus parses, as the only way to get a top parse is to kill all the dragons for the damage boost on Halfus, then have a select few people do all the damage while the rest AFK. But to do some decent numbers, save your Empowered Mu weapon until at least 3 dragons are dead and use it alongside a Dancing Mu weapon. Use your Icebound Fortitude right before Halfus is at 50% to avoid the stun. Valiona and Theralion. Have a Holy Paladin taunt Theralion at 1 second before you engage Valiona to bait the dragon to fly lower so you can cleave the second dragon with Heart Strike. Ask your Fail Druid to put up Fairy Fire on the second dragon as well. You'll want to solo tank the boss, AMS as many stacks of the Twilight Shift as possible, and use a strong defensive cooldown and save Rocket Boost for when you are teleported inside. Click the portal right away and proceed like normal. Stack the bosses underneath each other as much as possible to allow cleave and spreading up the ceases for your raid. Council. It all revolves around getting Ice Reprisal on your army to dead, so there are certain elements of the RNG and it requires your guild to play around it. If you have a haste set and a trinket to snapshot your army, then this will certainly be the boss to use it on. Heart strike as much as possible and use your second pot along with your second dancing room weapon. The cleave damage is higher than a single target in the last phase during lust, and cooldown timings are awkward when the kill times get quicker. Chogal. You'll want to soul tank the boss with the add tank coming in to taunt the fury of Chogal between adds. You'll want to drag the boss on top of the elementals for the raid to be able to cleave. Make sure to angle the boss to spawn the elementals in good positions. I take small steps to have the boss's side to be angled slightly backwards in order to ping pong the elemental position back and forth. Of course, you want kill times to be short, so have your mages get full corruption and blast. Save all external cooldowns for those pumping mages. Sinestra. You want to have a hunter reset the boss. Run into where the boss spawns, use your army and pre-pot like normal while blasting with lust. When phase 2 starts, don't run back with the rest of your raid. Stay in by the boss and AMS the explosion, which will give you full vengeance bar just in time for you to be able to use your second dancing weapon when the shield comes up. Tank the ads next to the boss and use a strong defensive cooldown when Sinestra becomes active. Use your dancing room weapon when the buff becomes active along with your second pot. Use your second ghoul whenever you have the haste buff and ideally one or two trinket procs. And that's how you get numbers in tier 11. The most important thing to do in order to improve your numbers is to exercise the information from the first part of this series. Any tip we went over in this video will improve your damage, but will be inconsequential if you don't press your buttons correctly. A video like this will come up for each of the subsequent raids at some point. So if you want to stay up to date for that, make sure to subscribe. I also stream over on Twitch and help people with their rotation and general gameplay. So give me a follow there if you want to get some tips for the Blood Death Knight. But that's all for now. Thank you very much for watching, until next time.